Beach Max here with David Wolf Live. We're here at the Sea Turtle Hospital at the Loggerhead Marine Life Center in Juneau Beach, Florida. We're here with the director, Jack Lighton, who will tell us a little bit about the good work that they do here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Loggerhead Marine Life Center. We're here in Juneau Beach, Florida. We are a working sea turtle hospital, and we're located right next to one of the world's most important and densely nested sea turtle nesting beaches. On average, our research team monitors 9.5 miles of sea turtle nesting beach here in Northern Palm Beach County. And on average, we can receive anywhere between 12,000 to 16,000 sea turtle nests each and every year. Our beaches welcome leatherback sea turtles, loggerhead sea turtles. You're looking at a loggerhead right here. This is our patient, Dusty. And then we also welcome a tremendous amount of green sea turtles. And what's really important uh, to understand about the sea turtle is they tell us the health of the ocean. And of course our oceans, which cover 70% of Earth's surface, tell us the health of our planet. ready to leave Dusty's hospital tank and we're going to go see another patient. This is Waffle. Each year we rely on over 350 active volunteers to help us carry out our mission of sea turtle conservation and rehabilitation. And what you're watching right now is Waffle, who is currently in his hospital tank, is going to be removed from the tank and then we're going to join Waffle inside the sea turtle hospital uh, here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center. We are one of the few sea turtle hospitals that are open seven days a week to the public. We allow our guests to watch what we do each and every day and learn about how important our work is to save these incredible endangered animals. We're taking great care. We actually strap Waffle in. Those are automotive racing harnesses so that we keep him safe on his uh, journey inside the Sea Turtle Hospital. You're watching members of our hospital staff and our volunteer team working on the turtles. Here we go. We're gonna go for a little, uh, little ride into the hospital right now. So loggerhead sea turtles are pretty amazing creatures. When they're healthy and well, they have incredible bite force and really strong muscles around their jaw because they eat crustaceans. So lobster, mollusk, crab, uh, conch, and when they're healthy and well, they need a really strong bite force to chomp through those shells and eat those creatures. Here in the hospital, we can do everything from really advanced diagnostic work, surgical work, intervention work, but we're also a teaching and training hospital. We welcome visiting veterinarians from around the globe to learn about the sea turtle rehab process and apprentice with our team so that they can take the knowledge that they gain here back to the regions around the world where they too can help the sea turtle survive. These little guys are green sea turtles. Green sea turtles are pretty fascinating. They grow up eating animals and plants. 
They're actually brown in color, but they're called the green sea turtle because they eat so much seagrass that their fat is tinged green. So they tell us a really important part of the ocean ecosystem. So you can see in the background, we've got our high definition x-ray system. It's the most advanced x-ray system in the world. When you're taking an x-ray image of a sea turtle, you have to shoot through the upper shell bone and the lower shell bone. It makes seeing inside the animal very difficult. So we have to have a really high definition x-ray system so we can see what's going on. And if the turtle needs surgery, we have a fully equipped operating room as well as ultrasound and diagnostic equipment right in here, where we can do everything from remove a simple fishing hook to perform really advanced orthopedic surgery on the animal. We also have the ability to do uh, very minimally invasive surgery and scopes through our high definition uh, endoscope surgical system, which records in high def. We can actually do a lot of work in the lungs and the digestive tract that we couldn't do before, and we get to save a lot more lives with this really, really important equipment. Now what is going to happen next with this little guy? We're going to do some diagnostic work. We're going to give some injections to the animal, and um, this is a member of our, our hospital staff, Ashley who's working on Waffle, and what are we giving Waffle right now? Waffle is getting his daily antibiotics. Daily antibiotics. It's no different than in the human setting when someone is sick. We do a lot of work just like in the human hospital. What else is Waffle going to have done today, Ashley? Um, he's going to receive a topical antibiotic ointment as well. So you can see that Waffle's illness created some skin lesions around the animal. So we're going to put on some topical antibiotics and scrub them up before he goes back into his hospital tank. The good thing about our hospital is our proximity to the ocean. We have an open loop saltwater system. So we take in fresh ocean water each day for every drop that we take in. One drop is returned to the sea. And this natural environment we feel helps the turtle progress in its rehab program a little bit more quickly. So we're very fortunate to have good, clean, healthy ocean water here in our hospital tanks. And what do you feel might be the cause to, uh, to Waffle's sickness here? Well, we don't know. I think Waffle is a, uh, a common illness called chronic debilitation syndrome, and turtles in the wild do get this illness often. Uh, what we're seeing is uh, an increase in this illness, and it's, it's very common in our hospital. And what happens is the turtle's entire system starts shutting down. They develop very strange illnesses from digestive to skin to respiratory. And what we're also finding is more and more in the wild, turtles are encountering marine debris. And this is actually the marine debris that one sea turtle patient ate when, he, when this particular patient was in the ocean. His name was Rayman. This turtle was able to pass it because it was an adult sea turtle. However, the real big threat to wildlife right now is the microplastics. Plastic never goes away once it's in the ocean. It just breaks down to smaller and smaller pieces. So unfortunately, what happens when plastic like this breaks down into smaller micro shards, the small sea turtle hatchlings eat them when they're out in the ocean. And unfortunately, they're so small that they can't pass these plastic shards, which often gives them um, a, an obstruction and, and potentially leads to death. These particular vials came from sea turtle hatchlings that we lost last season. And this was, uh, after their necropsy, this was the stomach contents of those animals. So we're very dedicated to finding out more about where marine debris comes from. We're in the process of fingerprinting plastics to find out their origin. And we're trying to use these animals to learn more and more about the health of the ocean ecosystem. So the, the harness that you see on the, on the hospital gurney is actually a, a, 
designed for, for race cars when turtles are healthy and well and when they come along. Uh, when Waffle gets better, they'll, they'll get a little feisty. So for their safety, we have to strap them down. And uh, it helps also keep our hospital staff and volunteers safe. And Ashley, you're gonna be applying this ointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he has these lesions all over his body. So we actually need to tilt him up a little bit so I can reach the plaster on lesions. And this ointment is just a yellow color. So it kind of tinges his skin yellow. He receives this treatment every single day. Uh, we, once the ointment is done being applied, we let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. So it has time to absorb and then we put him back in his tank. What's really interesting that some people might know about um, the work that we do when, when turtles have lesions or uh, when they have uh, abscesses or scrapes or cuts is we actually use a multiple mode treatment, sometimes starting with a, um, a honey. Most people don't realize that honey is a natural um, antibacterial and it helps soothe and quicken the process around wounds um, and injury. We also use a cold laser system, which helps speed healing by introducing more blood flow to the area. And in very extreme cases, we use something called a negative wound vac, which is also used in the human setting to speed along the process of healing. So on average, the sea turtle patients here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center are with us from about six to nine months. If they don't require surgery, the average cost of care can run up to about $15,000. But um, these, our goal here is to get these turtles uh, fixed up and healthy and well as soon as possible so we can get them right back out into their ocean home so that they can um, keep reproducing and help the species survive. So Waffle's actually a sub-adult uh, loggerhead sea turtle. Loggerheads and sea turtles don't usually reach reproductive maturity for 20 up to 30 years. And a full-grown loggerhead sea turtle can be upwards of 400 plus pounds. So we're still looking at uh, a relatively younger turtle, which makes it even more important to get this little one back out to the ocean to grow up. So each year at the Sea Turtle Hospital at Loggerhead, we will rehabilitate upwards of 100 patients. We will have um, many hundreds of sea turtle hatchlings, which are disoriented on local beaches, come into our hospital. Um, and since we opened this particular campus in 2007, we've rehabilitated over 1,000 sea turtle adults and many, many, many thousands of sea turtle hatchlings, getting them right back out into their ocean home. So with 
what's interesting, you've seen a little bit of our high-definition digital x-ray system. You've seen our, our, um, our surgical suite where we can do everything from minimally invasive work to very advanced orthopedic work. We also have our own blood research laboratory and pharmacy on site here in our hospital. We have a high-definition microscope that is teed into the internet where collaborators from around the world can help us assess and analyze the blood from our patients so that we can prescribe a more effective treatment program. We also can use our blood research lab to teach veterinarians and, and vet schools and vet techs what they're looking at by using our sea turtle blood, which is, sea turtle blood is a little different than human blood. So we're fortunate to have this blood research lab and capability here as it helps us speed up our treatment. If you can imagine if a, a patient is sick in a human setting and they have to wait many, many days to find out the resistance of perhaps a, an antibiotic to pneumonia or bronchitis, um, that could really slow down treatment. And we're lucky to have uh, the speed and the precision of doing our blood work on site. Awesome. Do you believe that there is a, a correlation between these uh, these skin lesions and the increasing amount of uh, water pollution and, uh, and toxins introduced into our uh, ocean ecosystem? Well, it could be. What we see here with our watershed in, in Florida is, um, and in many areas around the world, is we're seeing increased challenges and increased environmental load on the water. Um, in the summertime, we can see uh, an increase in patients, particularly these particularly small green sea turtles that are in the hospital today um, that come in after eating contaminated seagrass. Um, we know that there's a challenge with watershed and we know that there's a direct correlation between healthy water and healthy air and happy and healthy animals. And like I said, the sea turtle does serve as one of the proverbial canaries in the coal mine. They tell us the health of our, our ocean and coastal ecosystems and certainly our ocean uh, which creates more than 50% of the oxygen that, it, that, that our Earth needs. Um, our ocean tells us the health of the planet. And what is the next step for our patient here? Uh, he's going to get some fluid. The antibiotic I gave is rather harsh on the kidneys, so we always administer some fluids with it. And how long does the entire treatment process take each week? Uh, just for waffle? Each week it takes, he sits out about 20 to 30 minutes a day, so a few hours a week he's out of his tank. I have to say, he's a, he's a model patient. He's, uh, he's behaving very well. And what's interesting about the Sea Turtle Hospital here at Juno Beach is we are open seven days a week for free to the public. We have an open viewing hospital window where guests and children can watch the treatment that's occurring with our turtles so that they can become more involved and aware of what we do here in Juno Beach, Florida each and every day. Makes the experience fun and exciting for our guests when they can watch our hospital staff and our incredible volunteers uh, giving care to these amazing animals. Well, there you have it, Beach Nuts and David Wolf live signing off here at the Loggerhead Marine Life Center in Juneau Beach with Director Jack Lighton. Jack, thank you so much for sharing everything, and uh, we will be back to see you soon. Thanks so much. Let's say goodbye to Waffle.